Well, Manhattan's Chinatown, one of the oldest, the oldest Asian enclaves in the United States, is experiencing a rebirth. A new generation of social media savvy Asian Americans are revitalizing their family businesses and attracting new visitors to the distinctive neighborhood, which in the past two years has borne the brunt of the COVID-19 pandemic, along with anti-Asian discrimination. VOA's Tina Trin has more. Back in March of 2020, New York City was the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic. And in Manhattan's Chinatown, community members experienced it twice over. Not just with the disruptions caused by the virus, but with the racism and xenophobia that surfaced alongside it, sometimes manifesting in violence. It was an incredibly difficult year for this mostly immigrant community, but a new movement emerged among the younger generation, first and second generation Asian Americans who rallied around a newfound pride in their culture and their heritage and used social media to amplify their message. This is the story of Chinatown, Generation Next. Here in Manhattan's Chinatown, there's an energy in the air. More than two years since the start of the pandemic, the neighborhood is experiencing a rebirth. It's a wild-grown tea from my family's hometown. Leading the revival is Chinatown's younger generation, many of them first-generation Americans, the sons and daughters of immigrants who have the hustle and drive of a typical New Yorker. I am the second-generation owner of an intergenerational store in Chinatown called Grantian Imports. We specialize in tea and Buddhist and cultural goods. Lu's father started the business in 2006, after his first trip back to China since immigrating to America. He caught up with a lot of his friends that he had not spoken to in nearly a lifetime um, through tea. He has kind of seen the product transform from just a household drink that everyone drinks into more of like a lifestyle. And so he thought it was a very good opportunity to bring it back to America. To the outsider, tea may seem ubiquitous in Chinese culture, but it's just as easily overlooked. Like if you go to a dim sum restaurant, um, they would give you very, very low quality, cheap, free tea, um, which would just taste like water. Her father was on a mission to change things, enlisting Alice and her sister to help. Every single time there was any sort of community fundraiser or a person running for any campaign or in school there was some sort of event or show and tell or like a street fair looking for programming we would do traditional Chinese tea ceremony performances. The pandemic coupled with an increase in anti-Asian violence have made the last two years undoubtedly difficult for Chinatown's small businesses but that's where the generational differences in social media savviness have made a difference. Before the pandemic, we basically did not have a social media presence. And then since then, we've had to make sure to get on Yelp, make sure to go on Instagram. It's necessary that, like, you know, the younger generation needs to step in for this because the only reason why it hasn't happened up till now is because our parents don't have the ability, the English ability nor the technology skills in order to do that for themselves. Lou isn't alone. In recent years, her peers have launched a number of Chinatown-focused nonprofits to promote and preserve their beloved neighborhood. Their work is far from over. Unless we have like strong cultural institutions here, strong anchor businesses here to hold down the fabric of the neighborhood, it's very easily collapsible. Beyond just economic survival, it's a way for Lou to stay connected to her roots. I know a lot of Asian Americans, Chinese Americans, um, my generation, who are getting married. And what's quite sad is like what was considered a very traditional Chinese tea ceremony, um, they have like since had to adapt to just like drinking tea with their family at a dim sum parlor or just literally brewing whatever tea that they had around the house and or in a thermos and then serving it to everyone because they couldn't find a wedding tea gift set. Small businesses in a community of color, what they provide to the neighborhood is more than just the product or service that they provide, but also like that cultural knowledge and that ability to continue that cultural practice. For Lou, it's about finding new ways to keep old traditions alive. <laughs> 